In this video, I'm going to show you how to get more power on your forehand, but without losing control. And the way that we're going to do it is going to be a little bit different to something that you've probably tried before. But we're going to test it out. At home, you're going to test this out with shadow swings and you'll be able to feel it. But then once you've done that, you're going to want to get out and court and do a test there. Try these drills out that I'm going to show you and you should find that you'll be able to improve your power really quickly. I'm not going to be showing you any drills that are designed to improve your technique. That's not what we're doing here. What I'm going to show you how to do is to improve whatever swing you've got, basically instantly. We're going to improve how your body functions. It's going to make your specific swing more efficient. So it's going to work at whatever level you play at and whatever your technique looks like. You're going to test this out. So at home, you're going to do it with shadow swings. You're going to start by doing a certain number of swings. You know, just make sure that you've felt that you've warmed up and you've kind of got a gauge for what your rack head speed's like. If you know how your body feels, then you can go off the feeling. Potentially, you might need to listen to the sound that it makes to kind of gauge the change in racket head speed that way. But obviously, the best way to test this out, and I highly advise you do it, is to take this out on court and do it. Either get someone to feed you or use a ball machine or even just drop feed yourself so you can feel and see the increase in power. So the way this is going to work you're going to do a test, which means do a few shadow swings or do a few swings on court. Then you're going to do a drill, and I'm going to show you a few different drills to activate different parts of the brain that are going to be really important for having a fluid movement on your forehand. And once you've done those, you're then going to retest. So obviously, if you're doing a shadow swing, you retest your shadow swings. If you're out on court, you retest it with whatever you're doing there. But the important thing is that you don't put any more effort in. You're not trying to hit it harder. You're not trying to change anything. You're trying to be as unsubjective as possible. Test your swings, do the drill, retest the swings as similarly as you can to gauge the response. Now on that retest, there's three different things can happen. The first thing that can happen is the speed of the swing improves, it feels more efficient, you get more power. And it'll be noticeable. The second thing that can happen is absolutely nothing. People's nervous systems are wired differently. So I'm showing you how to create certain activations and it's gonna work for some people, it's not gonna work for others and that's okay. The third thing that can happen is you can actually feel worse and get less movement efficiency. Now, we don't need to worry about that too much for now, but we can use this information later on for really kind of improving your ability level and making you a better player, but I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. For now, as you go through these tests, you're looking for the one that gives you the best response. Okay, so now that you've done your first test, we're gonna do the first drill. The way that we're going to do this, you're going to hold your thumb directly out in front. It doesn't matter which thumb. You can use your left. You can use your right. You're then going to focus on your thumbnail or ideally the small part, the cuticle of your thumbnail. So you'll do that. Then you're going to keep your eyes looking at the thumbnail and you're going to turn your head to the left and back to the middle. Turn to the left and back to the middle. And I want you to notice that as I do that, I'm going quite quickly and sharply to the left. I can still see that target with both my eyes. So if I close my right eye, I can still see the target. So that's how far I'm turning. And then I'm going back slowly. So it's looking at the target, a quick turn, still being able to see it with both eyes, and slowly back to the middle. That's what the drill is gonna look like. It's gonna activate a specific part of the brain. Do between five and 10 reps. So you can test it out with five reps, that might have an effect. If not, try again with 10 reps, see if that has an effect. So do the drill now, then test your shadow swings, see what happens. Drill number two is gonna be a little bit different. We're still gonna be moving our head, but instead of having a fixed target, we're gonna be moving the target at the same time as our head. Because we're turning to the left, you'll use your left hand. Again, I want you to focus your eyes on the cuticle of the thumbnail. And it's gonna look very similar. I'm gonna to rotate to the left, and then slowly back to the middle. Again, quick rotations to the left, slowly back to the middle. I'm trying to keep my eyes and my nose lined up with my thumb cuticle, so my arm and my head are moving at the same speed. Depending how flexible your neck is, you know, you might be able to take your arm to 90 degrees, but if you look at me, I can't, I can't turn my head to 90 degrees, so I wouldn't take it that far. I would just take my thumb to there so that my eyes and nose are in line. So that's drill number two. Again, try with five reps, try with 10 reps, test the swings afterwards and see what happens. For drill number three, we're gonna to move to a slightly different part of the brain, activate that, see what impact it has on your swing. For this one, we're gonna be doing some hand figure of eights. So we're making a coordination shape with our hands. 
It's a great drill for training coordination as well, but we're doing it here to create the activity to see what happens. So if you look at the shape that I'm making with my hands, that's what you're gonna be doing. So I'm thinking about my thumbs for now, creating a smooth figure of eight. I'm gonna do three to five repetitions in one direction, turn around and do three to five repetitions in the other direction. This time I'm leading with my pinkies, trying to make a really smooth figure of eight. As you do it, you're gonna try and stand nice and tall, so you're gonna have good quality posture. That's gonna help with what we're doing. And you're gonna try and go fairly slowly as you do it. So I want you to take four seconds for each figure of eight. So it'd be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and then it'll be the same going the other way around. So test three to five repetitions of that, making sure that you go at that speed, then retest your swings, see how your body responds. Okay, how did you get on with those? Which one gave you the best improvement in terms of movement fluidity? If you've done that at home, you got a nice result, I highly advise you take it out on court and test it out there. The way that you would use this is if you find a drill that works like that and gives you improved racket head speed, you can use it within your practice session. So as you're practicing your forehands, you work on that particular drill. So you're gonna upregulate your system, hit more efficiently, then train your body to hit more efficiently. So now partway through, I mentioned that it, sometimes you can do those drills and you get a worse response. Your movement fluidity reduces, so you've got less racket head speed. If that happens, don't worry about it, but it does give us an information about how your body's functioning. That shouldn't happen. You should be able to do all of those drills and either nothing changes or you hit more efficiently. If it makes you temporarily worse, that means that you really need to put a little bit of extra training in to kind of work on the underlying systems to make sure that it's not messing you up when you're on court. To help with that, I've got a free vision starter program that's gonna be really beneficial with the visual side of things. You can grab that either from the description down below or I'll place a link up there. Start working on that, it's gonna be a real big help. In addition to that, I've got a masterclass that I've created to teach you more about this type of training because Really, what limits tennis players and prevents them from improving is how their body's functioning. Lessons are really important. Practice and all that stuff is really important, but you can only play at the level that your body will allow. So a lot of players really struggle kind of with the visual system. They're not very good at predicting where the ball's going, so they're slow to prepare. They've got issues with their timing and stuff like that. That's all to do with the visual system. We can train on that and we can work on it to make improvements, which makes you a better player. And we can also do the same thing with kind of your skill, your ability level and coordination. Because again, one of the big things that holds players back, they get a lesson, the coach tells them what to do, this is what your forehand should look like, and then they get out on court and they can't execute because their body doesn't work well enough. But this is all stuff that we can change with training. Hopefully you've seen improvements there and you're like, okay, if that's what happens when I do one drill, what could potentially happen to your performance and your ability when you do more of them? So if you would like to learn about that, I've got another masterclass or I've got a masterclass. I'll again place the link down in the description. I'll also place a link up there. And depending on when you watch watching this, this week I'm going to be doing a live masterclass, so if you sign up now for it, then I will see you there.